Hey everybody, I thought I'd make this video to show off the uh, the print setup I have for 3D printing. Uh, I got the bug maybe last September, uh, about six, eight months ago. Uh, I wanted to print it for a while and and I had a, a saw review on a podcast I listened to recommending this printer. So I went and bought the, the Prusa MK2S printer. And I uh, was really happy with that, and uh, that's when that's when it all started. I mean, that, <laughs> after I bought that printer, I went crazy. So let me give you a tour of how the thing progressed. So the first thing is the Prusa printer here. Uh, this printer is on a table here, and you see the first thing I wanted to do is make a, in case I was going to do ABS, I was going to make the, the uh, have an enclosure so you have an enclosure here with the uh i have exhaust back there you can see it I've closed off for the winter but i built this enclosure out of two by fours and press board and we got a little plexiglass here and we got sorry about the camera thing now we got a look at this this comes off it's magnet mounted So then I put the enclosure up here because I, I like to keep it uh, keep everything dry. So the, the, the uh, enclosure's in here and uh, just typical stuff. You, I, I actually got the, the Target. I think I got this stuff for Target. Uh, it's fastened to the bottom here. Just comes off. Okay, I have a desk in there in the back. Laying in the back here, some desk in. Some even dry desiccant. Got that laying in the back there. Keep it dry. And I monitor this thing 24-7 with, with a smart sensor here. I have a smart sensor in, in this this spool holder here and this spool holder on the other side you'll see. And I can monitor that through the, through the Wi-Fi and through the, the smartphone 24-7. I can trend it up to a year. So it's very easy to change this filament. It's, it's got the bearings underneath here. Um, that I bought for it. Just snap that back on there. And you can see inside here I have a, I can monitor my temperature. I have a GoPro camera to do the, to do the uh, time-lapse photography. And over here I have a Nest camera where I can monitor 24-7. As you can see here, I put lights on the inside. There's LED lights, and they're controlled in your hand. And you can see through the, the bottom there, I have a piece of uh, Teflon tubing going through there with some fittings where the filament goes down through the top of this enclosure here. Okay, the second printer here, I put this in maybe two months ago, uh, Ultimaker. Okay, we want to make a three. This enclosure here is two lac tables from Ikea. Side to the top of the table, and this is the bottom of the table, but the legs button each other. Painted it white. Put a piano hinge on here, plus a glass door with magnets. Magnet holds it shut. Again, same kind of thing. I put, I have a camera here, I can have this camera arm here, I can monitor that 24-7 and get that out of the way. Show you what I have in here. So I got this, this door. Monitor the temperature also. Putting some 9 on that right now. So the enclosure is also the same kind of light, controlled by your hand. Okay. On the back there you can see there's a door. These, there's spools at the back of an Ultimaker 3. So that's why I put the door in the back. I don't use the door anymore because I hate this spool. You can see the door in the back there. So I hate the spool holder back there. So what I did was I put another enclosure similar to the one for the uh, Prusa on top here. Also got a monitor device in there. And this time I took the tubing, went down the side because, because this printer feeds from the top, from the, the bottom up. The extruders be from the bottom up. So it comes in through the side there and it feeds up through 
with a seal on the end. So it's on a swivel, so I can spin it around. Okay, you can see the swivel. It's on a swivel so I can spin it around. I'm on the print. Okay. One of the best things I can do to tell you for a tip is this thing right here, battery backup. Because the prints take forever. So power goes out, that's it, you're done. You gotta start over. So I recommend a battery backup. And also I have these Wemos here, one for each printer. So I can shut them off remotely if I have a failure. When I'm watching them 24 seven, if I, if I have a failure, I can shut them off. Computer down here in the basement, a uh, spare computer I had for all your software duties. I have my work table here, got all the tools, post, clean everything up when I'm all done. A couple projects I'm doing currently. This little sander here, made from a toothbrush for fine sanding, works fantastic. Love that thing. You can see I have some exhaust for ABS. I haven't printed ABS yet, but I can. Some tooling here. Way to measure threads. Check the inside threads and outside threads. I have metric and standard. This tool here is invaluable for getting your pieces off the off the bed. Just slide into the piece, flip it right off. Just look for this thing. It's called a spatula. You have to get one of these for sure. You gotta get one of these. Okay, you got your assortment of, you got your alcohol here. And this is denatured alcohol, pure alcohol, not diluted at all. Got to have some acetone. Various measuring tools. Measure models when you build them up. Uh, another thing that's invaluable, hairspray. It's either hairspray or the glue. I recommend this hairspray. It's cleaner. But sometimes you need glue, polycarbonate you need glue for. So I'm going to keep glue around also. Have a 3D pen. Put these piece of filament in there. You can paint with three, uh, literally fix up some of your repairs with 3D printing. Okay, moving along here, you can see all the filament that I used so far. Here's all the scrap. Keep all the scrap stuff, failed prints, and all the scrap stuff. Okay, here's my two tubs. The tub on the bottom is for it's the small 1.775 millimeter for the Prusa and the top and the one on the top is for the uh, Ultimaker. You can see here I have you know, the desiccant. This is the three, this is the, for the Ultimaker on the top. This thing here, if you don't wonder what this is for, this is a piece of silicone cookie sheet. And what I do, I lay the glass for the Ultimaker on here. When I clean the glass off, it doesn't slide. I put it on the table and use that. Okay, some projects I've gone. R2D2 project. Got that going on. Some small parts for it. Good to have a uh, food dehydrator. This is fantastic. Food dehydrator, gotta have that. What I did was I took the, you can see I took the center out so that it will fit a spool in there. Okay. Because carbon fiber sucks up moisture. So does nylon. So if you're having trouble with it, you put it in here for six, eight, 10 hours at 160 or 140, whatever you prefer, and uh, you dry it out. Airbrushes for finishing the airbrush. All your finishing tools here. You got your uh, coating for your epoxy coating, smooth it out. 
Got your glue, invaluable glue. This is the bit, one of the coolest things I bought too, a little, little stir there for the paint, for the small paints. Keep all your hardware. Gotta have hardware when you're building the models. Keep them all organized. You can see over here I have paints. Okay, we got a whole bunch of paints, and that's what little stir is for. I can actually literally fill it up the bottle and stir it in there with it. If anybody doesn't know, the best thing for thinning your paint, your acrylic paint, is Windex. No ammonia though. So glue is very good for all your parts. You want to glue it together and you got fast set. You gotta have brushes, right? You paint some stuff. So you gotta have brush, plenty of brushes, different size brushes to paint and stuff. Wood burning set for trimming the plastic. So you got a wood burning set for doing that. Over here we got some eyedroppers in here. A bunch of eyedroppers for mixing a small amounts of paint to the right consistency. Got a cleaning device here. Some more paints down here. Uh, here's your masking tray here of all masking stuff in here. We're masking stuff, different masking for masking your paints. Okay. Up here, we got some more finishing tools files, sand blocks, all that good stuff. We have all the Dremel tools, organized, okay? Organization's key here. With all this stuff, you got to organize all of it. Okay, a couple projects I'm working on. Got some vices here and stuff. Can't leave home without it. Compressors for your little airbrushes. Put, I advise you to put quick disconnects on, quick disconnects on them. So you get them on and off pretty easy, especially when you use multiple airbrushes at the same time. Got some projects going here. Really cool. Little uh, paint booth here. Very invaluable to have that. Let's take a close look at that. Just these are regular shop back here. Anyway, this paint booth here. Got little holders there. It's a good paint booth in the back. It's lighted. Some more pieces of R2D2 there. This is a Dremel tool here. So the Dremel goes down in the holder here, up and down. And we got a milling, XY milling table here for milling small parts. Okay. Over here we have some finishing work areas here. <coughs> See them on R2D2, or uh, not R2D2, listen to me, Yo uh, Yoda here. Finishing him up, getting him ready. Got some other pro small projects going. That's pretty much it. Oh, this here, this little basket here and his tongs. And there's also a little pump here. This is an aquarium pump. What I do with this, I put it in the slop sink in the, in the garage. And I put this to hold the piece down. And um, I use PVA, water soluble supports. And I put it in there in a couple hours and uh, it's all finished up. So glue gun in the case here. Gotta have a glue gun. C clamps, all that good stuff. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I can see it's quite the obsession. It turned into one printer, I don't know how many, six, eight months ago, and now it's grown into this monstrosity of a work area. So you see it's quite the setup. Uh, any questions, just shoot me a comment or email me. Uh, I can answer you any questions for you. If you want to know where I got any of this stuff at, if you want to go ahead and get some for yourself, and give you some tips and, and whatnot. But it's it's super fun, super fun hobby. And uh, I really enjoy it, as you probably can see with this obsession I have here. But, uh, you know, uh, keep in mind some of the things I told you about, you know, the, the, keeping the filament dry, keeping the enclosures temperature controlled. You don't want it too hot. You don't want to burn up your electronics. You just want to keep it controlled uh, so the print uh, comes out real well. So thanks for watching and uh, 
happy 3D printing, everybody.